This is Mr. Hunter. This will be our first video of Unit 4. This one's going to revolve around taxes. Unit 4 overall is going to be a part of this unit on macroeconomics, which would be the side of economics uh, that is looking at the big picture. All right. So for the most part for us, we're going to focus on the government and mostly in the United States, looking at how does the government interact with the economy? Uh, how does it evaluate its success or failure? How does it step in and try to make corrections when there's example of a market failure or just negatives going on in the economy? How do, what kind of steps can they take to improve it? So uh, that's going to really be our focus here. Like I said, we're going to look at taxes here beginning with, with that. We're going to look at government spending, uh, you know, there a lot of, a lot of things with that within these five or six videos that we're going to look at for unit four. So let's dive in here. We're looking at taxes, which by definition, we're just looking at, this is the, the funding that comes in to fund the government. Uh, you know, all the services, all of the programs that, that exist, all those public goods that we talked about in unit three, those need to be paid for and they're paid through taxes. So individuals that are part of, of this economy are going to pay that through income taxes. If you're working in the United States, uh, sales taxes at the state level, uh, corporate and payroll taxes are going to be taxed on businesses. So, and there's others as well. So we're just leaving it at those, those couple examples there. Uh, so those programs or those, those systems, those tax structures, pay for the government and, and its functions. Now we want to talk about the impact that, of taxes. We want to talk about the uh, criteria for effective tax strategies. We're going to look at the different types of taxes. And then also we're going to take a quick look to analyze the federal income tax system in the United States. So we're going to try to get that all into this, uh, this short video here. So let's get rolling. We're looking at the impact here. We want to be careful that, that we're not creating a negative impact by our tax structure. That we've talked about many times that the most effective way to, to let the market work is to let the market work. Don't step in and make a bunch of adjustments. Taxes are only going to create a negative uh, to that, right? So, but but taxes are inevitable. We have to we have to have them in place to fund our government. So we have to balance it. We want to be careful not to tax industries so highly that it that it creates a really big negative impact in terms of allocation of resources. So we need we need the the market to act as it would as if the, the tax wasn't in place as much as possible. We can use taxes to discourage negative behaviors. We've talked about externalities, those negative side effects. An example, we talked about cigarettes and how there's a clear negative consequence in terms of overall health, uh, financial consequences, all these things with with smoking. Um, so we create systems to discourage that and create less consumption of that. We do we call those sin taxes. So any any good that can be consumed that we want less of it consumed would be would be considered a sin tax. Uh, we want to be careful not to discourage productivity and growth. We don't want to make it so that the jumps in tax amount, if we're looking at a progressive system, which we'll talk about in a little bit, it, we don't want to create a situation where people don't want to make more money because they're afraid they're going to be taxed at a higher rate. Uh, so we don't want to discourage that growth. You know, we they, we want people creating businesses, and we don't want people not creating businesses because they're afraid of taxes. Right. So um, so we want to make sure that that's still in place. And then also just analyzing the incidence of tax. Who's paying it? We've talked about this. It, it revolves around the elasticity of demand and what you know, where who's going to pay it? Is it going to be the consumer? Is it going to be the producer? So we have to figure those things out. Now, in terms of evaluating taxes, we look for three things, equity, meaning fairness, simplicity and efficiency. We want to try to get all those three. Uh, the problem is it's subjective. So like what does equity mean? is going to be a different definition for two different people. So we have to be careful with that and balancing that out. Uh, you know, it, simplicity is fairly, fairly straightforward, but sometimes creating a system that is more simple is not necessarily going to be considered equitable. Uh, so it's hard to improve any one of these things without hurting one of the others. So it's impossible to get like this perfect structure, but we're overall looking at these three areas and evaluating our, is it an effective tax based on how they, uh, how that impacts those three things. All right, so that's what we're trying to move toward. Now, let's look at the different types of tax systems that exist. Uh, we're going to look at the proportional, the progressive, and the regressive. I'll kind of use my mouse here so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, let's start with proportional. This would be a, also known as a flat tax, uh, and in some instances, a fair tax, which would be subjective because some would disagree that it's fair. But what this means is that it's 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 based on your income. The percentage that you pay is based on or you pay a percentage based on your income. Uh, the tax stays stays the, the income amount. I'm sorry, the the percentage stays the same. You pay more as you make more money, but it's but it's at the same rate. You're feeling the same pinch. So your examples here: you have a person making ten thousand dollars a year and a person making a hundred thousand. Notice that like it's a 0.975 tax for both of them. 
They're both paying the same. However, the person making $100,000 a year is going to pay a much higher amount, but overall they're, they're feeling the same impact of that tax. All right. So they're both feeling that same 0.975 pinch from this tax. All right. So that's known as a flat tax, proportional tax. All right. Progressive tax is what we use for our income tax, federal income tax. Not exactly the same setup here. This is kind of simplified. I'll go into more into that when we analyze it at the end here. But as your income goes up, you pay a higher percentage of your income. So in the case of the person making $100,000 a year, they pay a 25% income tax. That's $25,000 of their hundred. Uh, and the person making a uh, ten, sorry, $10,000 a year pays a 10% rate, which comes out to 1,000. So both the overall amount, you know, a thousand compared to twenty five thousand, and then also the percentage increases as you make more money. Okay, so so that's the the big difference there between the progressive and the proportional. You pay you pay more as you make more. All right, and the idea is some people would say that this is I mentioned now the proportional tax is often referred to as a fair tax, but many people would argue that the progressive tax is more fair because the person making ten thousand dollars a year has a much larger need for that ten thousand dollars than the person making a hundred thousand. Because uh, they have plenty to live on, so it's just, it's a debate. So it's hard to get to uh, the bottom of what's what's equitable in the end. And then finally, we have the regressive tax. We use this for our state income, or I'm sorry, our state sales tax, where it's just a flat percentage rate, not nothing based on income. But what turns out, what ends up happening is, since it's just a flat rate based on what you're buying, as your income goes up, you actually pay a lower percentage overall. So you know, this person making hundred thousand dollars spends twenty thousand dollars in food and clothing. It's taxed at 4%, which comes out to $800, which would be 0.8%. Whereas the person making $10,000 a year uh, spends $5,000 and it's at 4%, they end up paying more of their overall income as a percentage than the person making $100,000 a year. So that is a regressive tax system. You pay, more, you pay less as you make more. All right, let's take a look at the income tax brackets for of the United States in terms of our federal income tax. All right, this is a very misunderstood concept. I'm looking at an individual taxpayer. There's other there's other scales that exist when you're you know married, married, finally, jointly, not jointly. There's a bunch of other uh, pieces to that too. But we're going to look at the simple one, just an income, individual income tax. Now, notice that this is a progressive tax. So as you make more money, as you jump, kind of climb the ladder here from 9,525 up, through 500,000 and higher, you're going to pay a larger percentage from 10% to 37%. Here's how we get around this and we make it so that people are not discouraged to make more money though in this system. You pay, we call this a marginal tax system. So as you make more money, you pay, everyone pays the same 10% on that first 9,525 25 that you make. All right, and then you climb to the next spot. So in the case of that, so the first 9,525, you pay 10%, which comes out to 952.50. All right, so from that, now you jump into that next plot, say you make $30,000 a year, you pay $952.50, like everybody else does. Then you pay 12%, that next marginal tax rate, on everything in between $30,000 and 9,526. All right. So then that's how that's how it goes. And it just keeps moving up the ladder so that you're still paying the same as everybody else every step of the way until you finally get over that uh, that hump where you are now paying 37 percent on everything over five hundred thousand dollars. Um, now, the reason for this is that you don't want people to be discouraged from you don't want people to be discouraged from making more money, because in this instance, if it was straight just 37% versus 35% over over your total, you would not want to make $500,001 because you would actually have to pay more in tax. You'd make less money by getting that dollar raise. If you, you know, so $500,000, you pay 35%, 500,001, you pay 37% of your overall. That's a, that's a, you lost money by getting that raise. So we don't want to discourage people from making more money. That's why we've created this marginal tax structure. All right. So we're going to do a little bit more on taxes in class. And uh, we're going to be looking next at spending. Have a good one.